So just like you, every single year, I wanna try and get better, not just as a golfer, but as a golf coach. And what I found in the early part of last year is I came up with a concept called the swing circle. So it was hugely helping golfers to improve their ball striking and the direction with every club in the bag. Today, what I wanna do is, is I've tested it, it's working so well, I wanna give you the opportunity to see it for yourself. So whether it's ball striking you're after or improvements in direction, maybe you're slicing the ball terribly or hooking it, I know that the swing circle is gonna be the fastest way for you to improve your game. And the great thing about it is it won't take much of your time. In fact, we're finding with my students in just a few minutes, just the concept and a few tweaks to their setup, it's making a massive difference to the way they hit the golf ball. So before I, uh, I get into the video, if you're new to the channel, it's one of your first lessons of mine, please consider subscribing. I release videos just like this every single week to try and help you improve your game. Plus, I always put a free downloadable practice guide in the description box below so you never have to remember a thing. So let's start with a real simple visual for your ball striking before we move on to your direction. Super simple. So I didn't know whether you knew this, but when you swing, okay, with this golf club, you are creating a circle. Look at this. As I swing back, I'm creating a circle on the way back and look, on the way down, very naturally. Now with every circle, Okay, there's a bottom to that circle. In golf, we call that the low point. And the center of your circle, and therefore your low point, is actually directly underneath your lead shoulder when your lead arm and club line up. Now, all you need to remember is this. The center of your circle and the low point need to be after the golf ball here. That's all you need to think about. If you are struggling to strike your shots consistently, your circle isn't over here, it's over here. Yeah, and basically what's happening is here is, is your club may be lining up, your lead arm and club are lining up in a straight line behind the golf ball, and then when they get to the golf ball, now we've got kind of the circles heading upwards. We want that circle striking the ball down, and look at this, the club lines up after the golf ball here, then it works its way up. This is the circle from this angle, okay? That's what I want you to focus on. Now, to help you achieve it, it's really simple. This is what I do with my players. It's people who are struggling to get ball turf contact or create this circle in the right place, all I do, I get themselves set up here. I make sure, first of all, that their pressure or weight is moved over onto their lead side. So I've, I've got almost 60-40. What does this do to the shoulder? Moves it slightly further forward, doesn't it? Remember, if this is further forward, what's that going to do to the circle? It's going to push it further forward, yeah? It's what we want. The second thing I'm going to do, look, is this. I'm also going to get the handle opposite my lead leg here with the ball slightly back in my stance. I've got an eight iron here, and I'm moving the ball in the middle of my stance. What's this done? Well, look, if I've got my hands forward now, okay, and my weight forward, I'm going to strike the ball like this. When's the club going to line up? After the golf ball. If you have the hands, which I see with so many of my students, like this, well, you've already got the, the opposite kink. Now the problem is, is you're kind of almost in flick mode, right? So here, you're already in a position where you're gonna, uh, you know, gonna, it's gonna hugely affect your ball striking. So, hands opposite lead thigh, pressure forward, and then visualize a circle that strikes the ball, and the lowest point of that circle happens just after that golf ball. That's all I want you to do just initially to improve your ball striking. Once you've got that image in your head, the next thing I want you to imagine is this. Imagine a dot in the middle of your shoulders and the middle of your hips here. And when you're setting up, they are on top of each other. When they're on top of each other, they're in a better place to create a very consistent circle that swings up and down over the top of that golf ball and strikes it first. If you're set up with, which again I see with a lot of people, with this dot, over here, now the problem is, is you're not in a position to create a, a, a consistent circle that's gonna strike down on the golf ball. Have it over, now we can create a circle that comes up, comes down on top, and again, look, hits the ball, then the ground. So, get them in line, get your setup correct, and now once you've done that, let's now work on some direction. So I hope you've got the idea now of the circle from kind of face on here, where we make sure we strike the ball, then the ground. But also, if we switch around here, we're also, you're also creating a circle here without you realizing at times. So when I swing the club back, up, back down again, and then through, I've also created a circle. And how that circle is created kind of determines how straight I hit the golf ball. If you slice a golf ball, for instance, you don't have a circle that's angled here, your circle is angled over this side. And what happens is you swing up, swing down and you're swinging across the line of the golf ball. If you have an open face to that path, 
That is what's going to create the slice for you. So if that's the case, what you've got to think about is, and what people don't realize is most of the time, the problems, your curvature, your shots are already predetermined at setup. So let me give you an example of this. I want you to watch my body. If I'm over here and I'm creating a swing circle that's over there, watch what I'm doing with my knees, hips, shoulders to kind of shift my circle around. What do you notice from my knees? Where are they moving? Where are my hips moving? Where are my shoulders aiming now? Can you see? My alignment here of knees, hips, shoulders, and more importantly as well, forearm alignment, okay, is going to shift that circle around. Now, a recent student of mine um, basically had this kind of weird looking swing where he would get himself set up here. You could see he was trying to create a circle, but it was very wristy and armsy. And the reason being is, is just like you probably, he had one element in his setup that was not helping him create the desired and consistent circle that he needed. So what he was doing is his feet were perfect, his knees were all lined up, even his hips were perfect, but his forearms were aligned like this. Now the problem with that alignment is, is that going to help him create a circle that swings around here? It's not, is it? It's going to basically encourage a circle that comes across the ball. Well, kind of, you know, he probably felt that was uncomfortable, so he then randomly started to try to do this to try, and, to try and create a circle with his wrist and create this kind of wristy, weird looking golf swing. All we did was go, right, let's get every body part lined up in such a way that you can create the circle that you need. So all I did with him was this. Knees are perfect, forearms lined up here. Now look, forearms, hips, shoulders, all in a place which can create the circle that he wanted on the way back and on the way through. Once he got that coordinated motion aware, the differences in his ball striking and consistency were incredible. And I'm talking literally within five balls. Felt a bit weird initially, of course it does, but the results were amazing. Now, what I do with somebody who's slicing really, really badly is I simply exaggerate everything. And we'll do, we'll do this for hooking as well. When you slice the golf ball, okay, we know that your circle is heading way too far across the line of the golf ball. So notice this. If I start to move my body over this side, okay, I'm going to try to shift my circle more and more out to the right hand side to really exaggerate this. What am I doing as I do this? Shoulders closing, hips closing. Where's my club now? Way back here. It's way back here on the arc, okay? So this is what I do when people slice really badly. I really exaggerate. I close them, not their feet off, but the knees, hips, shoulders off. I move the ball way back in their stance. Hands forward, very much opposite at least leads to uh, thigh. Close the club face off. And then all I do is get the ball way back in the stance. And from here, I just get them to simply create a swing that creates this, visualizes a circle over here and then swings over here. What do you think that's going to do for them? Watch this. I'm exaggerating this hugely, but watch this. Watch this curve. I've created so it comes in here and comes over here. Watch that. That is going to create a monster hook. I get, and if you're doing this, I want you to really test this out. Create this shot. It sets out to the right, curves to the left. Because once you've done that, it's completely the opposite to what you'll be used to in your slicing it. The feelings are hugely exaggerated, which is brilliant. It will feel strange. In fact, I did this recently with my dad. If you watched the video I did maybe a week or two ago. And what, what it does is you start with that and you think, well, I don't want to hook it, Danny. Great. But now you've exaggerated this motion with the ball back, everything aiming there, so the circle's going over there. What do you do? You gradually tweak everything ball position hip position just slightly, so I'm not, I haven't moved it all the way back, and I reduce it slightly, so I'm a little bit squarer now, but not completely, and I do the same thing again. This now will be just a little bit less than you just saw just a minute ago, yeah? But now what I'm doing is, and what you'll be doing, you'll be developing the feel necessary to start to get your ball going straighter and straighter, and you now think, okay, that's one, maybe I'll move it a ball a bit further forward now, more, this is more central. I'll just, it still feels close to me, but okay, let's just try this. See where this one goes. Okay, watch this. We look at this now. Now we're starting to hit much straighter. Why is that? Because I've found roughly the balance of where I need to be in order to hit my straight shots for me, the feeling. That's what I want for you, okay? So, you might be asking, 
What changes should you make with drive? I'm gonna come to that in a second. But before I do, look, give yourself time on a driving range or in practice to work on these things. You can see here, by exaggerating this, you're gonna feel strange. My, my students definitely felt strange. But once they start to see this curvature here, built confidence up in, oh wow, this feeling is great, but how do I reduce it? Ah, oh, that's how I reduce it. They were able to build confidence up into their technique, which they can then take to the golf course. That's really, really important. The second thing I'd love you to do is this. Get one of your friends to take a, just a five second video of you down, uh, from down the line, and then another one directly face on. That way you can check for yourself. Are you set up to, first of all, look, middle of the shoulders should be over the hips, ball position, hand position, opposite left thigh. Are you set up to strike ball, then turf in that kind of circle? Again from here, are your feet, knees, hips, shoulders, are they set up? How can you tell sometimes? You can't. Get a friend just to do a quick video from down the line. Really important. If everything's lined up, you can make a beautifully coordinated motion where your arms, hips, everything work the club away. If one element's slightly out like um, one of my recent students was, that's when you start to see this weird stuff happening, okay? So please go and check that out. Now I promise I'd give you something with a drive. I'm, I am gonna create that in a later video, but everything we've talked about right here, you're gonna see with the irons and the changes you need to make with a driver in two live lessons. I'll put a live lesson here and a live lesson there. You're gonna see all in action. You're gonna absolutely love it. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up, share it with somebody who you think could, this kind of thing would really help. And of course, look, if you're new to the channel, press that little button right here so you don't miss out on any future videos. But until next week, have a great golfing week.